Hello guys, my name is Darklick, and as you can see, in this episode, we are going to be getting the best early game power in the game, as well as completely remodeling our base. I hope you guys are ready. Alrighty, welcome to episode 9 of our Hardcore All The Mods 9 Let's Play series. If you guys were here last episode, in the last episode we went ahead and actually beat the Ender Dragon, which if you haven't seen that already, Go check that out. I highly recommend it. It was a very crazy and exciting episode. But what we're going to end up doing in this episode is now that we have kind of have everything, we can go ahead and actually start customizing our base. Because right now, as you can kind of see, it's cobblestone and planks and this area isn't even set up to look very nice. And this area is kind of just a mixture of a bunch of different things. So we're going to go ahead and fix that in this episode as well as later on we are going to be getting ourselves the ultimate source of power and sadly we aren't going to be able to do a time lapse of the base building it's more or less kind of just going to cut to where it's going to be however i am going to show parts of the different rooms that i end up building and as well as the overhaul of the main area so let's not waste any time and let's get right into this video now, the interior is going to be textured as so. We are going to have blocks of quartz as the floors. We are going to have blocks of industrial iron as the walls, which this stuff is really easy to craft. You literally put an iron ingot into a uh, cutting table or something like that, and it turns it into the iron, the stone cutter. That's it. And then for the roofs, we are going to go ahead and use Polished Deep Slate. I said that we were going to end up using this before. Well, now we actually are going to go ahead and use this stuff. So let's not waste a second and let's get to remodeling. And whilst I was building the base, where did he go? Look, we found a dogo. Oh, and it became friends with us first try. <laughs> oh, Comment down below, guys, what we should name this guy, because we're going to need a little name for him. And I'm going to leave that guy up to you guys, so be sure to go down, leave a comment, and tell me what his name should be. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, finally got a dogo. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Definitely going to need, need a name for this guy. And as you can see right behind me, I have finished completely building the house. You're going to realize it now has a roof. And there's a couple of other things on the inside. So let's not waste any time. Let's go check out this new build. Uh, I had to cut out basically all of it because, for the record, this build took me three hours. <laughs> so if you, got, if, you, if you like it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment what your favorite part of it is. But let's go ahead and head into this base. If we go ahead and head on to into here, I changed the entire interior here. There's our new dog, which again, comment down below what we should name him. But in here, I made it look really nice, like it's kind of like a starter base. There's this nightstand, which is really nice. It acts like a chest, but it looks really nice. There's our bed. Like, everything here looks really clean. But you can realize there's a little sub different here, and that's because right here is an elevator. And if we just go ahead and shift down... Welcome to base 2.0. Man, this took me so long to completely redo. We have the mob farm right here, of course. We got these really nice dynamic edge lights that make the thing look super nice. This is the, the crafting room and the, uh, like the processing room. We have all of our uh, stuff on the side now, and we're able to power all of those with the cables running from behind it using the... Flux Networks mod. Over here is some stuff that I was using to actually go ahead and make the different decorations for this area. We moved our teleport pad into here. I made this little teleporter design. I think it looks pretty damn cool, and it's a running thing that's going to be through all the different, like, floors. I cleaned out this area entirely and moved our integrated dynamics things into here but this is going to be the main room that we're going to be working on for now where we're going to go ahead and actually make ourselves our power stuff and that's going to be really fun we're going to also make this area look really clean and set all of this up for whatever power needs that we have and on top of that 
we have that room, which I'm going to be revealing at the end of the episode, so stay tuned until the very end and see what that room is. And then if we head on down here, we completely redid this area. We dug out this area, which is going to be a corridor, and there's a little sneak peek over there into that room, and we're going to get into that room in the next episode as well, so stay tuned for that. But on top of that, here is our new uh, processing area. It looks so nice. I love the way that that wall looks, and I love that we now can just have all of our villagers and our crops in the exact same area. It's really nice. And then over here and here, we basically have set up to make rooms in the future and then probably expand on those rooms into those different directions. And then if we ever need more space, we can just dig down. So that's basically the premise of this entire base. I really love how it looks. It's going to need some more decoration. However, it looks incredibly nice now, and I am so happy with how this entire base turned out. It looks exactly how I wanted it. The only thing that's a little bit missing from it is some decorations. I haven't been able to get uh, those different decorations yet because those are in mods that I haven't gone through. But I definitely look forward to decorating this place even more. And I'm already really happy with how this turned out. Like, And this is the reason I wanted these doors because it just fits the theme perfectly. But... We're also going to soon need to get a separate room for those mob farms, which, again, another episode, looking forward to that one. But in the meantime, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be completely taking this setup and we're going to be basically maxing it. Because now that we have an infinite source of diamonds, redstone, and every other material that we could need... We can actually go through and get the max tier for the power mod. So let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into that. But before we actually go ahead and do that, something that we're going to need is we're going to need these all the modium seeds. So we're going to actually go ahead and quickly make these. I have a lot of essence in our storage for this reason. This is going to take a minute, but we're going to make both the crux for this, which is the magical soil, as well as these all the modium seeds. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. And to go ahead and do that, we're actually going to need to get into some auto crafting because as much as I would love to sit there and go through 115,000 essence and turn that all into insanium, we just don't have the time for that. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be basically coming over to here and we're going to be separating this essence and we're going to have a little auto crafter back here behind this wall, which I need to put a secret door for that. But behind this wall, we're going to basically put our infusion crystal and we're going to just have this automatically crafting straight into insanium. So let's go ahead and show you guys what we're going to be using for those crafters. And to make these crafters is actually really easy. You just need this machine frame, which is blue dye, iron, and gold. And then you just put it into the crafting table with two crafting tables and two redstone torches. And you just do this over and over again. And then you have yourself a max tier crafter. It is insanely easy to craft from RF tools. And it's going to help us significantly. So... I'm going to also show you guys how we're going to go ahead and actually set up this auto crafting. All right, so this is how you actually go ahead and set one of these things up. First things first is we are going to place down our crafter. It's going to go right here, and we're going to configure this by placing it like that so that it's pulling from this. And I actually forgot to grab a item pipe upgrade, so give me a second. All right, and just like that, we actually have these diamond pipe upgrades. Now what we're going to need to do with this is we're going to need to add a whitelist, basically saying what shouldn't and what should go in here. For example, the only thing we really want going into here is Insanium. So we're going to go ahead and set that as a whitelist. Now this thing will only pull Insanium from here. 
But what we're going to need to now go ahead and do is on this side, we are going to need to pipe underneath this. And we're going to need to go place this down, shift click that. And we're going to basically be taking out uh, everything that isn't Insanium. So we're going to go ahead and put this into here. And we're going to whitelist Infirmium Essence. Actually, no, not Infirmium Essence. We don't want the Infirmium Essence in here. We want to add everything that isn't that. So we're going to go ahead and add the Prudidium, the Tertium, the uh, Imperium, and then the Supremium. Perfect. Now this is set up and configured correctly. Now what we're going to have it do is we're basically going to just have it pipe back into itself. And the reason for that is very simple. What we're going to end up doing is we want the items to go back into here and get crafted up. Also, this thing is going to require power, so that's why I got us a flux point right here. We're going to have this configured to our network. This is now charging with energy really slowly that is going to change relatively soon thankfully however now we can go ahead and actually configure this and how this is actually going to work is we're basically going to have an item pipe pumping the infirmium out of this shelf right here into this crafter and it's going to be pretty easy to go ahead and do that and what we're going to actually want to go ahead and do is we're going to set a recipe for this so first things first we're going to set this recipe uh we're going to keep one item in every slot, and that basically is going to mean that we're going to fill this up with basically uh, cobblestone as things that we don't want in here. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put in the different essences into here. And that's how we're going to be able to do this auto crafting thing. So first things first, let's go ahead and uh, craft this up. So the first things first is we are going to turn this infirmium into uh, Prudidium by doing it like this, and it's going to apply. What we want to do, uh, we'll go to Outfit Buffer, Result of Crafting Operation will stay in Buffer, uh, Items like Buckets will stay in, that's what we want. We want it to be this way for all of them, because it'll basically act like a, uh, th basically this Infusion Crystal will stay here for every upgrade, and it's going to be really, really nice. And actually, I think we can just click exit because I kind of want this to just go straight to Insanium. So what we can actually go ahead and do is in order, we can go ahead, uh, turn this to keep. And we're going to just do the same process with all of these. So I, I will skip to the part where I actually do something a little bit different. All right. And this should be set up correctly. We're going to go ahead and test that, though by actually putting some infirmium into here so we're going to go ahead and take out a little bit of infirmium and we're going to just set this layout up so that this works properly so we're going to go ahead and take about a stack of this and how this should work is if we go ahead and do like so and then we go ahead and order this like that if we go ahead and apply this we're going to need to apply this to every layout if i'm not mistaken so we're going to go ahead and do that but if i'm not mistaken it should keep one of every single essence in here so if we go ahead and chuck this into here uh oh and of course we need a slot for this duh uh Forget remembered layout, and now I'm going to need to click apply, remember, apply, and now that is always going to hold the crystal. Now, how this should be working, which I don't see it working right now, so maybe I'm doing something wrong. All right, I figured it out. It was because this all slot was uh, currently filled up, and it said keep, so it was expecting two crystals to be in there when in fact there wasn't but now what we should be able to do is if we just go ahead and dig like so and just really quickly connect this uh pipe down to here we're gonna need to take these away 
And now what we should be able to do is we can just, if this is, yeah, this is the infirmium one. We just dig under here and then place these item pipes. And before we connect these, we need to actually disconnect all of this. Uh, and we actually can just get rid of this one. But what we're going to end up doing with this is we're going to just quickly uh, do that. But before we actually go ahead and connect this, we're going to need to put ourselves a pipe upgrade on this. So we're going to need to go ahead and get this pipe upgrade. And we're going to need to make it so it only pr pulls out the infirmium. So if we go ahead and take our infirmium, drag it right there. Now this is only allowing infirmium to pass through. So now we can go ahead and actually connect this to our system. And if we go ahead and do that, as you can see, it is auto-crafting us our insanium. Man, this this is the power of autocrafters. It's just going to make our lives so much easier. And now what we're going to just go ahead and do is we're just going to set it to this corner right here. And now that is passively going to be draining from here. And uh, insanium in general. And it's all going to be heading into here and turning directly into insanium. Just like that. Like, it is incredibly easy to set up, and I highly recommend that you set up your Insanium automation like this. You can even do it with the Insanium, with entire blocks of Infirmium up to Insanium. I'm just doing it with the Essence since I can, and it's a little bit cheaper for me to do right now. However, if you can turn them into blocks, it's way more storage efficient, and I'd highly recommend it. But while we wait on that, let's go ahead and get into the Power Mod again. So, to actually go ahead and uh, do all the stuff for power, we're going to need to go through all of these different tiers, which lead all the way up to Nitro. This is what we are going to be getting, which is the Nitro Magmator. Because if you don't know, the maximum generation for a reactor is 250, which is equal to if you got uh, 16 of these magmators so realistically you could just if you want to make these magmators and that's exactly what i'm gonna end up doing because it's actually more effective for me to do it this way because instead of having to maintain a reactor with uranite uh ice and a bunch of other things we can just pump it with the lava the infinite lava that we already have and just have it run infinitely so we're definitely going to be going down that route of power and it's going to be a lot more efficient for us until we can set up a system to automatically fill that thing with dry ice and uranite now it turns out we actually need this farm more than we realize so we're going to go ahead and quickly dive into mystical agriculture a little bit as you can see in my head i finally got the insanium blocks from our auto crafting system to actually go ahead and make ourselves some all the modium seeds. So we're going to finally go ahead with this. And just like that, we got ourselves all the modium seeds. This is going to be so incredibly powerful. Now we need to go ahead and make the magical crux for this. So let's go ahead and do that. And now with this all said and done, we got our last insania block. That we needed and now we're just gonna put these right here and just like that we got ourselves our magical soil <laughs> this is already going to be so helpful let's let's go ahead and plant these all the modium seeds let's get right to it now i did go ahead and make us our second farm finally so we can stop sharing the infirmium essence and i did get a good bit of lily pads of fertility right here but what we're gonna do now so we're going to place this magical soil right here. Oh boy, I'm ready for this. I'm so, so ready for this. And we're going to grab our all the modium seeds, and we're just going to plant them right here. And just like that, we have ourselves all the modium seeds. I'm going to get an ender chest hooked up to this, and I'll see you then.
Now all we have to do to actually turn this bad boy on is we just throw the all the modium hoe into there. And just like that, we are now growing all the modium. This is an amazing achievement, and I am I'm, I'm so happy. Let, I cannot wait to get some all the modium. And then we can go ahead and actually gear up with all the modium gear. And that is going to be significantly stronger than our gear right now. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and now be able to move all of our materials from there into this chest and just dedicate that entire area to specifically infirmium and we're gonna get so much in sadium now that that's all set up we can actually now properly go into the power mod so we're gonna go ahead and actually craft up all of the basic uh magmators so yeah i'll see you then Alrighty, and i think eight for now is going to be plenty of power i will eventually be upgrading this to even more power however there is stuff in the way as you can see down there so right now we're just gonna work with it and uh just use eight because eight is already probably gonna be more than we're gonna need so it'll be fine but yeah now we're gonna work on actually advancing this into the next tier and that is going to be really important as we're gonna need to do a lot of energizing for this to actually work and we're going to need to go through energized steel and then we're going to probably end up actually getting seeds for these things so we don't have to worry about crafting them over and over again using all of our energy and honestly that is just looking like a way better and better option so we're actually going to go ahead and do that we're going to figure out what all of these require this is a tier four i'm guessing this is a tier five tier uh five and then this i know is a tier six so that's gonna require us to get insanium and a crux honestly i'm just gonna skip out on the nitro stuff because the nitro crux actually it's not that bad i actually think we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna make all of these as seeds so you guys are gonna stay tuned to see how we actually make all of those materials so yeah Let's get, let's get crafting. Now, looking at the crafts, I can tell they definitely made it harder because this used to just be a block of blazing crystal to make, and now it's in it's a one times compressed block. And same thing with like the nitro crystals and all of it. It's compressed blocks. Even the nitro crystal seeds, like the actual seeds for making this stuff, is one times compressed that is so much like that is that is insane so this is gonna take a while to craft but it's definitely gonna be worth it knowing how expensive these are so let's go ahead and get to making these but to go ahead and make this energized steel and to make all this other materials in the first place we're first going to go ahead and make this area this is going to be basically what infuses our stuff with power all we're going to do is we're going to set this to be energy. And then all we can do or all we want to do is we're going to take these energizing rods and we're going to get more of these. Right now we only have one, but all we're going to end up doing is putting them into here. And these lasers are basically going to come down and hit right here and turn this into the energized steel that we need. This works the same way, except to make the blazing crystals, you do it with blaze rods. With the uh, niotic crystals, which is the blue ones, you use diamonds. For the... Uh, what's the other one? For the spirited crystals, you use emeralds. And then for the nitro crystals, it's actually the most expensive out of all of them. As to get them, you have to take a nether star, two redstone blocks, and a block of blazing crystal. So this is definitely going to be a little bit of a process, but we definitely got this. We need to upgrade the uh, transfer speed of our energy by getting more and better versions of these energizing rods. We're ideally going to want to go all the way up to, like, nitro, but right now we're a little tight on... Uh, resources right now since we ha don't got the seeds for them yet so let's go ahead and continue making the materials for them and let's go ahead and upgrade our energy system from basic to hardened 
And with that all said and done, we can finally actually go ahead and make these energized steel seeds. This took a while because to make this, you need nine, actually no, 18 blocks of gold and iron. So it was not easy to make. And it's going to cost us 32 blocks of each when we go up in the tiers. So thankfully it wasn't as bad because the gold and the iron make two of them. But look at that. We got ourselves some energized steel seeds. And this is going to be incredibly helpful, especially since we're not quite yet done with getting ourselves this energized steel. And it's going to just be useful later on as well. So let's get these growing and I'll see you when I craft all of our magmators into energized steel. And just like that, we finally have enough resources to actually turn all of our magmators into hardened magmators, which this is going to be amazing as what this now basically does, since these each generate a uh, 400 FE a tick. I'm pretty sure now with this being said, uh, we're at like 3,600 F, uh, 3,600 FE a tick, which is really good. And now I believe it is time for us to go up to blazing, which like I said, blazing is literally just a bunch of blaze rods. I'm going to do the blaze meshes because it's faster to charge. But look at that. We also got a full harden setup up there. So this isn't going to take that long at all to actually go ahead and set up. And look at that. This is incredibly nice. And all we're going to need to do is get some more power to make this go faster and then upgrade those uh, top pieces, the uh, actual uh, energizing rods. Once we upgrade those, this is going to become a lot faster of a process. And yeah. I'll get back to you guys once we make ourselves these, uh, all of our blazing crystals and get ourselves those blazing crystal seeds. And there we go. We got ourselves finally enough to get these blazing crystals. The amount of time it takes to charge the, uh, compact blaze cubes into these is insane. It takes like, seven it oh goodness sorry it takes seven it takes like 7.2 million fe to fully charge it's insane like it took forever but thankfully now we actually have these blazing crystals seeds and now we can just grow them instead of having to charge them which is going to save us so much hassle and now that we actually have all the materials required we can go ahead and make ourselves this blazing magmator now we're going to go ahead and set these down, and now we're going to be producing about 1,000 FE a tick, which is just, it's going to be insanely helpful. However, now we need to go ahead and make ourselves the Niotic Crystals, and these are going to take quite a bit of energy to actually go ahead and make. So let's go ahead and make those right now. And as you can see, the longest part of actually getting the different seeds is having them charge. This takes 24 million FE a tick, which is absolutely insane. And that's for one of these. We're going to end up needing eight of these. I mean, four of these. So it's, it's going to take us a minute. And after waiting about like... 30 minutes or so, we finally have the ability to craft these seeds. And it's all going to be worth it. I'm spending the time now because it's going to be worth it in the log run. And now that we have these Niotic Crystal Seeds, we could upgrade our energy system again, all the way up to Niotic. And then after that, we're going to need to get Spirited, which, for the record, um, yeah, I was looking at the, uh, cost it would take to get the uh spirited uh blocks that i need to charge them up it's gonna be 81 million four times the length of the diamond seed so hopefully that it go it goes by relatively quick and finally after all of that we got ourselves our eighth and final niotic magmator 
This this process is taking a very good while, but it definitely is going to be worth it. Like, this is going to generate us so much power. Like, right now, even as it is as we speak, it is generating 2k per, so that's 16,000 FE a tick from this small little setup in itself. It is very, very powerful. And I'm going to just give a little uh, reminder. If you guys are enjoying, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment down below. Because as of the time of recording this, I have spent nearly six hours recording just this video. And that's just recording, not even editing. So I'd really appreciate it. You don't got to, but I'd very much appreciate it if you did. Now let's go ahead and get this spirited stuff. I'm actually going to go ahead and make the magmators first versus making the seeds because with these magmators, I'll generate more power, which means that the process of turning these into the blocks is just going to be faster. So we're going to just turn these magmators into their spirited forms. And I've also decided that we're not going to go ahead and make the... Uh, nitro crystal seeds because that is going to take way more nether stars than we have right now so we're just going to chill with that and we're going to just upgrade them with the nitro crystals that we do get and just like that we have finally crafted all of our magmators into spirited magmators now this energy output is going to be extremely high if it is eight per that means that we are making about 64,000 FE a tick, which is absolutely insane. And it can go even higher, as now it is time for us to actually turn these into the Nitro Magmators. And when we get that, we're going to be getting ourselves about 160,000 FE a tick. It is insane. And... I've been having this wither module running this entire time to get us nether stars because that is one of the big things that we are going to end up needing. And it's actually going to be shorter time than with the other stuff because to make the spirited crystals, there's only one way to make them and it's one fourth of the energy cost to get these emeralds, uh, these block of emerald times one. It's it's a fourth of the cost uh, in terms of energy. This one costs 81 million FE. These cost 20 million. So it's going to be significantly easier to actually go ahead and make. And since we already have ourselves the different redstone and blaze crystals growing, this is going to be insanely easy. This is, this is why I said getting these early is going to just save us so much time. Because we can just go ahead, make those blocks like so. Get these redstone blocks. And then all we have to do is we just put two redstone blocks into here. A block of blazing crystal and a nether star. And just like that, we're going to very quickly, as you can see from the bottom... We're going to be able to get these uh, nitro crystals extremely fast, and it's going to be so useful. As you can see, even with these, we get 16 per. We're going to have to make this craft, I believe, five to six times to get all of our magmators up to nitro. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's max out our power. And just like that, we finally, after all this time, have gotten ourselves all Nitro Magmators. This took so long. However, now our energy generation is amazing. And this is going to be able to power us anything that we need. And I mean anything. At least up until we need to make ourselves a reactor. And we're going to eventually have to make reactors. However, for now, we're honestly chilling in terms of energy. And this is honestly an amazing time to end off the episode. However, we do have an amazing announcement to make here. 
or at least a shout out. Now at the beginning of this episode, I did say that we were going to go ahead and enter into this room. And that is because this room is for our patron supporters. That is right. In this room, we are going to be shouting out our patrons. And the first patron who is actually in here is going to be Furball Rules. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It's because of people like you that I'm actually going to be able to hopefully one day make this my full-time job. Thank you so much, Furball Rules, for actually supporting us on Patreon. I appreciate it so much. Absolutely amazing. It means everything to me. And if you want to join Furball Rules in this, you can go ahead and sub to my Patreon. The link is in dis the description, and you get a bunch of other cool benefits, such as getting sneak peeks into future episodes, as well as getting an exclusive role in the Discord server. So I highly recommend checking it out. And well, guys, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as each one of those helps me get one step closer to taking this on full time. I appreciate it. Again, thank you so much to our Patreon members. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. And in the next episode, there's probably a lot of different things that we are going to be doing and probably even end up going into that secret room. If you guys are new to the channel, go check out episode one. And if you guys haven't seen the last episode, go check out episode eight right now on screen. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, peace out.